All right, so really today, today's call is going to be all about email. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about the email that Steph and I have noticed is crushing right now in 2021. We're seeing it in a whole bunch of different niches. Uh, I first noticed it in the health niche, and it tends to be a staple of the financial niche as well. But we got a bunch of different examples from, I don't know, five, six different niches that we're going to share with you. Um, the cool thing is these emails are pretty easy to write. Uh, they're not that tough. Um, and so we're going to kind of break down exactly what goes into them, how to actually write them, uh, and what's making them work so well. So before we hop into that, though, a um, little intro of Stefan and I for the people on the call who don't fully know who we are. Um, I'll intro Stefan and I'll let Stefan intro me. So Stefan, uh, in my opinion, is the number one copywriter in the world right now. Uh, and I kind of measure that by how many offers have you written that are working on cold traffic? And I think over the last five years, Stefan's probably written more offers that work on cold traffic than anyone else. Um, he's an incredible copywriter. He's also an incredible entrepreneur, built a $23 million supplement company. Um, <clears throat> really good at finding unique angles, unique hooks. Uh, and is also, I would say, probably the fastest copywriter that I know. I'm knocking out sales pages in one or two days that wind up converting and working on cold traffic, which is pretty insane. I mean, even like the best of the best A-list people usually take a couple weeks or a month to write stuff. So that's kind of a quick breakdown on Stefan. Uh, Stefan, I'll let you give a little ditty about me. Well, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Um, this is the light shining to your eyes, Ken said. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, so Justin, my partner in Copy Accelerator, uh, is one of also one of the best copywriters in the world, but also one of the best marketers, um, an expert on every aspect and angle of a funnel, including upsells, which is one of his areas of specialty, uh, as well as getting offers to scale and get to a thousand buyers a day. Justin is the co-founder of um, Four Patriots, which he helped to scale to also 23 million, which is a very funny coincidence. We didn't make that up with both of our supplement companies did 23 million. Mine was in the second year. I think yours was in like the second year too, wasn't it? Gross. Year. Eat you a little bit, but, um, and you know, since then he has advised all kinds of the biggest names in direct response, helping them to optimize their funnels, increase conversions, get a better AOV and really just find money. Um, but I love Justin because he has such a holistic view and is an expert on every area of the marketing and acquisition process. Uh, so, and one of the smartest people I know, he truly is. So I'm really excited to be here with Justin today. Sweet. So, yeah, yeah like we said, <clears throat> today we're going to talk about email, uh, specifically emails that we see that are working right now. Steph and I pulled up a bunch of different examples. We're going to kind of go through them one by one. Uh, I'm actually going to turn it over to Stefan and let him lead this call. Um, if you guys have questions along the way, pop them in the chat. Uh, I will watch the questions if there's something that's relevant uh we'll we'll interrupt and, and kind of answer those cool and by the way fade came in and said am i i'm too late he literally did this on our last call too the so fade you're you're over two on being too late now you've, you've got the time right twice in a row and asked so i think i don't notice these things in the chat though i noticed it came on david um yeah you, you're all muted okay cool i'm gonna share my screen let's jump in so I don't have a fancy PowerPoint, but I do have cool examples. And the way I decided to do this um, is to kind of show, so, so basically, okay, the type of email is curiosity email. That's like the giveaway, right? Um, we're teasing it, curiosity emails, and frankly, curiosity emails just work better than everything else. I think curiosity is basically, with, with good copy in general, it's like emotion and curiosity. And those are the two things, and they go hand in hand. So we talk about like emotional leads, and if you're not gonna do an emotional lead to a sales letter, it better be a curiosity based lead. And same thing with emails, you can have emotional, I would say with emails, my personal opinion is that curiosity is king. Um, I think you can have emotion in the, the body copy, but when it comes to like a subject line and getting somebody to open, uh, curiosity just tends to do better than everything else. There's, there's nothing that, that beats curiosity and you have to have it in multiple places. So we're gonna talk about that. You have to have it in the subject line, right? Cause they've got to make them curious enough to actually open the email. You have to have curiosity in the body copy, uh, assuming that you know it's a creative or a promotional email. Um, and then it's got to tie into the headline and the actual copy that you're sending to from the email. So what I did is I went ahead and kind of created five curiosity categories, made and create them. I looked at commonalities and what kind of curiosity types of emails we see. I call them curiosity tricks. We've got five. So we're going to go through them, each type, and look at different examples. 
And the first one is a really straightforward one. Curiosity trick number one is reflecting a question on your audience's mind. So I'm gonna show you two examples of this and I kind of pulled these PDFs out. Now, what's funny is this very first one I'm gonna share is not a, um, it is and isn't a marketing creative. So it's from the a Money in Crisis email list. See up here, it's got kind of like Brian Spironello, but it's not, but Brian, if you're on it, just uh, kind of funny. So GameStop equal Tech Bubble 2.0. So this one is not like, the, what we're gonna look at a two examples. I have over 12 examples and then Justin has examples as well. Um, but the reason for this is because it's, it's topical, right? If you just say GameStop equals Tech Bubble 2.0, um, you know, people have, there's an immediate curiosity because you want to see what they have to say about that. Why? Why does it equal type bubble 2.0? You know, do they make a compelling argument? So these are kind of like a topical thing. It's on your prospect's mind. Um, and as you go through it, this is actually, it's a content email. They have some ads here. Like there's an ad right here for um, one promotional thing. And then it actually goes into this whole, uh, the content. I'm going to read the copy for a lot of them. This one, I'm not going to read all the copy for because it's just a content email. Um, but GameStop was really big in the news, right? Everyone was hearing about it. GME, uh, the stock went up to like $260 a share or whatever it went to. Um, and so that's just a really quick example for a subject line, but it doesn't follow through necessarily send a promotional email. Let me show you another example here. This one's from Funnel Hacking Live, Russell Brunson. Uh, really straightforward email, but it works. Funnel Hacking Live 2021, is it gonna happen? This works for his warm list because if you're a Russell Brunson fanatic, and you want to know if Funnel Hacking Live is, is happening or not, you're going to open this email, right? So this is, this is very simple curiosity. We're going to get into like weird tricks and shit like that in a minute, right? But we can look at this one real quick. It's been exactly one year since our last Funnel Hacking Live event. We all met together as Funnel Hackers just a few weeks before the pandemic broke out. This year has been a little crazy. And the number one question I keep getting from everyone in our community is when is Funnel Hacking Live coming back? We miss the community. We miss the connection. Can we meet in person live or will it have to be virtual? Well, I've got great news for you. This Thursday, I'm going live and I'm going to explain what is happening, where it's happening, and how it's happening. You can register for this live announcement and see a pretty insane video from the last year's event or from last year's event here. You got the video, which is a link right when you click on it. Funnel Hacking Live 2021, is it going to happen? With link. It's been a lot of work to try to pull off what we're trying to pull off, and I'll explain it all on, this, on the call this Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. Um, side note, Three, three Eastern would be noon Pacific. So old, old Russell fucked up on that. But so come and register, block out the time in your calendar, take a late lunch break and find out what, the where, and the how live this Thursday. Sounds like fun, cool, I'll see you soon. Thanks again, Russell Brunson. So what I want to kind of point out with this one is like, it sort of implies that it's going to happen, right? But it doesn't actually say, yeah, we're doing it live, here are the dates. It says, sign up for an announcement, we're going to give you all the details. And plus you're gonna see this insane video, which even that's a good image. It's kind of like, looks exciting, there's high energy. If you're a Russell Brunson fanatic, you're into that. Is it gonna happen, right? Um, trying to pull off what we're trying to pull off. I'll explain it on this call. Come register, find out the information. So while he is and he's asking a question, remember this is like um, a question that's on your audience's mind. He's not giving you the answer. You have to actually register to get the answer. I mean, Justin and I kind of did the same thing with promoting this, right? We kept it blind. We said there's one type of email um, but we didn't say what type of email you had to come to this call to find out that they're curiosity email. So this is number one, reflecting a question on your audience's mind, but we've got uh, four more to go through. Before I do that, Justin, do you have anything you want to add to the examples I just shared? No, man, you're doing a good job. Oh, well, thanks, man. Okay, so curiosity trick number two, using a quiz or an informal survey. These are very commonly used and very powerful. We've got three examples, one from Digital Marketer, one from Danette May, and one from Natural Health Sherpa. So let's go through those. The Digital Marketer one first. I'll make it nice and big. Right, it literally just says quiz, most marketers get this wrong. By the way, Digital Marketer has actually, I used to think their emails were super weak, not being a, a jerk. I just, like the subject lines were kind of boring and lately they've gotten way stronger with their subject lines. I don't know if they have a new person writing a lot of their emails or what, but they're much better. Um, but this is nice and straightforward. Whoops, give me an open preview. I was trying to uh, zoom a little more. Oh my God, I hate my Mac sometimes. All right, guys, here we go. Stefan, which of these do you think is the best channel to establish, to establish a loyal fan base of readers? Skip ahead for the answer, link right there. Content marketing, email marketing, social media, pay traffic. So they're all links, which is smart, right? Very high click-through rate on this email. 
When you really think about it, the answer isn't actually all that surprising. Make your selection to find out. Talk soon, Ryan. Ryan does, right? So very simple, but tons of curiosity. If you want to know the answer, people love quizzes, right? Let's, quiz funnels work. Going back to those who remember all the quizzes and magazines and stuff like that, be like, um, and women's magazines especially, but, you know, does he, does he like love you? Is he into you? You know, five signs that you're X, Y, Z, like um, things like that. So really simple quiz. Most marketers get this wrong. Asking for an answer with the engagement. I guarantee you the engagement on this email is insane because of like the, the amount of um, opportunities to click and the click-through rate is fantastic too. So basic, very, very simple, very short, um, awesome click-through. And then let's actually click on it, see if it's still, yeah. Right, it's taking you to the email newsletter workshop and this is a sales page that they have for this offer that they're running. Which by the way, that's funny too that digital marketer is running this workshop about how to create your own email newsletter. Makes sense, turns out email newsletters are pretty lucrative and profitable and high engagement and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a good creator. So that's one example from kind of, um, I don't know, I guess like teaching, like uh, the teaching space, right? But here's one from uh, Danette May, let's open this one. It's, not, it's from somebody else promoting her offer. And frankly, I think the formatting on this sucks, but um, walking versus jogging, really simple again. Here's today's tip, exercise. Although I personally love the benefits of resistance training, many people just want to know whether simple things like walking or jogging can be helpful, and which is best for them today. I'm going to let my friend and world-renowned fitness expert, Danette May, explain the benefits of walking versus running, and also what she chooses instead of walking or running. Is walking or running better for you? New blog for fitness expert, Danette May. Look at that. And then it says the number one worst exercise for aging. So it's related. This is, I think, to content. This is interesting. And then this one's going to be to like an offer. Um, it goes, Did you know that certain exercises can help you slow aging and help you to look younger, but other specific types of exercises can actually age you faster? Not good. Make sure to avoid the types of exercise that accelerate aging in your body. My colleague Steve Holman explains which exercises to avoid in this article. This exercise accelerates aging in your body, plus five tips to look 10 years younger. Steve also shows you on that page which spe uh, specific format of exercise helps reverse aging. So you actually have kind of a double curiosity bomb here. But the point is, like, this isn't like a quiz of like, hey, like, like, um, like you, they could have done it in the same format the digital marketer did, honestly. It would be a cool test if they're like, hey, um, which of these exercises is actually best for you? And you can link, like, list four exercises or five exercises, and each one is a link, and be like, the answer is going to surprise you. Click here. But now think about that. You can do the same thing for um, which investment strategy actually gets the best returns on the market. And you could have like, you know, annuities, dividends, real estate, blah, blah, blah. Click here. So going back to the digital marketer one real quick, like you could have swiped it for that one, but you could also, you could take this exact format, right? Quiz. Most investors get this wrong. Quiz, like um, most uh, workout junkies get this wrong, whatever it is. And then, you know, you could basically do again, like, Hey, which spice is actually the has the highest antioxidant content? Turmeric, moringa, moringa is a plant, whatever. Um, you know, cinnamon, ginger, blah blah. blah. Like, when you think about it, it's not that surprising. So, I just want to be really clear about that as you're looking at these emails. Like, it's very easy to swipe these and apply them to other niches or categories. You can apply the same thing to almost any niche or category, and I think it would do really well. I mean, honestly, I'm going to probably swipe it for something I do in the future too. Because why would I not? Okay, third example. This one's from Natural Health Sherpa. And it says, which is worse, rice or almonds? So again, we had a, a, a like a kind of a raw quiz from a digital marketer. Then we had you know jogging versus walking or whatever from Dinette May. Here's another one. Like it's like it's an either or comparison, rice or almonds. And nice and short email, right? Hey, it's a Sherpa. Did you know? Let me go a little bit. Oh my, God. my MacBook is killing me today. Okay. Did you know that eating the wrong foods can kill immunity and leave your body vulnerable to disease or infection? It's true, but eating the right foods can actually strengthen the immune system and help defend your body. But what foods should you eat and which should you avoid? Here's a brand new free report of 19 natural immune boosting superfoods that are likely in your home right now, plus five immunity killers you must avoid. You can download the report for uh, free for the rest of the day right here. 19 immunity boosting superfoods and five immunity killers free for the rest of the day. And then their little signature they always do, keep an open mind, do your own homework and try new things to see what works best for you. Um, so again, they don't tell you what the 19 immunity boosting superfoods are, 
of the five mini killers, you have to click curiosity. You want to know an answer. Um, but there's also a question that invokes curiosity because in your head, you start arguing with yourself. It's rice. I mean, it's gotta be rice, right? It could be almonds. Like, no, almonds would be so weird, but what if it is almonds and it's a trick question? Fuck, now I gotta know. Click, right? Um, so that's number two. I'm gonna pause again. Any kind of questions in the chat? I'm gonna get to any other observations you wanna add? Do I just keep doing my magic? I see you're still muted. No, you're good, man. Keep rolling. Okay, all right. Let me actually look at the chat for five seconds. Let me pull it up here. Kind yeah, of just, just a note for everybody asking, the, this presentation will be posted on YouTube and then at the end of the call, we'll give out the document as well. So you guys can have access to all of it. Yeah, for sure. Cool, just hang out the comments for me all. Sweet. You rock, Ken Krell. Okay, number three. Curiosity trick number three. Um, appeal to authority or credibility. Smart people are doing this. You see this a lot in um, kind of financial type of offers. So I'm going to show you two of them here. This one is from a, like a you know Agora Agora subsidiary list for the Gilder Daily Prophecies. Um, but this, I've got two examples that are kind of um, from this space, right? Why smart money is pouring billions into this, and this is. Uh, an affiliate offer for Weiss ratings. Why smart money is pouring billions into this. Dear Daily Prophecy Reader, the arrow in the image below shows where the cryptocurrency market is at, is at this time. You see the arrow in this chart. We're right on the cusp of mass acceptance by mainstream users, but two unrelated events are about to make select cryptos household names and shower investors with untold fortunes. Due to these events, more people will flock to cryptocurrencies than ever before and leave fiat money like the dollar in the dust. In fact, the smart money is already in on the action. Business Insider says as many as 36% of institutional investors in the US and Europe own crypto assets. Tom Jessup, president of Fidelity Digital Assets, says there is now greater interest in an acceptance of digital assets as a new investable asset class. And the new surge in demand, along with diminishing supplies, is about to send select coins to record highs. Click here to read this developing story. Good luck and God bless. Martin Weiss. So what do I like about that? First of all, like I said, this appeal to authority, like the smart money is pouring into this. Um, but then also going back to the curiosity aspect, you've got this kind of like cryptic chart. You see that the arrows pointing here, but then you've got two unrelated events that are about to make select cryptos household names and shower investors in one fourth fortune. So note again, uh, not seeing what the events are. That might seem obvious, but one thing I've noticed even especially well, not especially, but including in, in health, people even in, in copy starter, the issue they'll make is like, they'll be like, um, you know, one weird part of your body could be like impacting your uh, ability to lose weight. It's your thyroid. And in fact, the study, and then it's like, oh, let me tell you everything. And it's like, you know, you can do that type of email, but like, think about like, these emails are foreplay rather than, uh, than the actual getting it on, you know? Like curiosity emails are foreplay is the way to think of it. And so as soon as you, you know, get naked and uh, you're like, eh, here I am, flabby body and all, kind of the, the appeal and allure disappears, right? But when you're still clothed and uh, in the art of seduction, that's where curiosity emos shine. So we want to seduce our reader when I have a foreplay. We don't necessarily want to get naked and just be like, here's the answer. Let me educate you a bunch in this email, right? For these, we're talking about promotional emails that are generally designed to keep people to click. There needs to be congruency because if you're just like, um, like if this email went to something like about how to like, you know, why Tesla stock is going to explode and that nothing to do with cryptos, you'd get a high click through rate, but your conversion rate would probably suck. Um, so there has to be congruency, but you don't need to give away the farm. And that's true of any type of, whether you're financial, health, whatever else it is, especially when you're doing curiosity. So let me show you another example also in the financial space. I really like, this one got sent a couple of times. I, I pulled it from Gilder and they sent it a couple of times, but also that money, whatever the like um, crisis money one I, I, I shared a second ago, they've even most, I've seen this one got sent out multiple times. So I know that it's, that usually is a sign that, you know, the email has done pretty well. Um, and it makes sense. 44 famous people shifting funds here. So as soon as you see that, you're like, um, 
like, oh, well, I, well, who are the people, right? Like 44, I love the specificity, better than 45. 44 is a very unique number. It seems like really real and legit versus 45. Famous people, people are always curious about famous people and they're shifting funds somewhere. Where are they shifting them, right? This one is the other, this email is better than the other email just because of the subject line. Um, the other email I just showed you was also good, but this is better. You can just tell because of the specificity, famous people, curiosity. 44 famous people shifting funds here. Dear reader, we've identified 14 billionaires and dozens of wealthy, successful individuals who are shifting their funds into a special type of deal. Peter Thiel, Michael Jordan, and Wilbur Ross are just a few of the names. They're chasing exceptional gains in a new and very specific type of play with the potential to churn out some pretty extraordinary returns, e.g. 7,946%, 2,740%, 3,626%. And while gains like these can't be promised, our technology guru, the gentleman who found the number one tech stock on the S&P for the last five years, Jeff Brown, is sharing where this investment capital is flowing to and the number one way for you to play this same trend. This is a story you're not hearing in the news. Best Van Bryan from Brownstone Research. Right, really good email. Or it also capitalizes on the whole, hey, don't miss out, which is all financial copy to me is, is like, ooh, big opportunity, don't miss out. Smart people aren't missing out. Are you smart? Then you shouldn't miss out either. Um, but again, 14 billionaires, a bunch of wealthy, like this is all, you know, you're curious who the billionaires are and mentions a couple, so it adds credibility, but you still don't know who else is doing it. Um, again, they don't tell you what the play is. Remember the seduction and foreplay aspect, right? It's a specific type of play with potential for these huge gains. And then this guy who's picked a bunch of the other uh, winners in the past is going to share what it is and how to play the trend. But we're not giving you the specific, um, the player, the answers. So I think this email is really solid. All right, we're going to number four in a second, but let me check in on the chat. I like that line at the end. By the way, is this, uh, is this helpful for you guys so far? Are you getting, getting some good takeaways that you're gonna be able to use writing your emails? Feel free to pop something in the chat so we know. Awesome. Sweet, awesome, awesome. Yeah, as I was preparing this, I'm like, damn, I could like give this at one of our events or to like members or create like a whole course on it. Um, but uh, I was like, fuck it, let's just give it, let's just give it away for free. Um, let's just provide that value. Glad you all are enjoying it. Good. Some people have a ton of ideas. Some people have already written emails. Good to wake up to this. It's awesome, Ken. Um, very good. Very good. Love it. I love that you all love it. Fantastic. Cool. So let's move on. Number four is use a named mechanism. Um, this one is you see this a lot in like, well, I'll show you an example. This one was from Rob Weiser has an ED off. Remember I bought it. There's a um, copywriters drinking, married copywriters drinking White Claw and breaking down copy. And that was when Laura and I were kind of drunk on White Claw and tequila. And we did a YouTube video where we dissected like a random offer on ClickBank. And we happened to pick an ED offer and it happened to be Rob Weiser's offer, which I figured out as I was going through it. Cause I'm like, oh, the copy's actually pretty good on this. Um, but because we bought it, I'm on his list and I never refunded. I never refund when I buy products to funnel hack them. I just get lazy. Um, so anyway, swear to God, that's why I'm on ED Elixir's buyers list, promise. Um, but that being said, uh, he sends out some great emails. I don't know if Rob writes them himself or somebody else does, but I really like this one. Um, drink this mountain blood. It's like a natural blue pill, right? So this is for people who buy an ED info product and are interested in ED. And I don't know if he wrote this or if it was a creative that somebody gave him and he's promoting an affiliate offer. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's promoting an affiliate offer, but I don't know if they gave him the creative or he wrote it, but this mountain blood thing, I just love it immediately. Um, hi, found in the remote Himalayan mounds, this bizarre liquid is scientifically proven to restore youthful sex drive fast. Best of all, it's 100% natural, safe, and available worldwide. Watch this brief video and see why thousands of senior men are turning to this libido boosting elixir. Revive your sex with life with sorry, revive your sex life with mountain blood better than blue pill, Mike. So super easy. The image, you know, these are the gimmicky, clicky images, but they work. Justin and I did a whole thing on Copy Accelerator yesterday where we broke down a really uh, successful offer that was a total swipe of other successful offers. And we talked about how if it works, don't try to reinvent the wheel, you know, like you can copy what works. And these images where you're looking in there, you're like, oh, what is the mountain blood? It's so easy to add a circle and an arrow. Um, but I love mountain blood, right? So it's kind of like this named mechanism, this unique thing. Like 
uh, drink this mountain blood. This is cool. It, it gets your attention for sure. It creates curiosity. What is this mountain blood? Of course, I'm sure it's some, you know, berry or herb or whatever that the locals of so-and-so place call mountain blood because it, you know, helps to keep the mountains alive or some shit like that. But great curiosity. I love that. I like, really like this email and um, drink this mountain blood. And another one, this one from Paycheck Solution. Now this one I want to talk about because I think it could have been better, but it's still good. So one second. Make $600 per day with this internet loophole. So I think internet loophole is a little bit generic, but they have in quotes. Um, but it is another example of like a kind of name mechanism type thing, right? Don't let this one pass you by, Stefan. Our Paycheck Solution entrepreneurs are loving the simplicity of this system and especially the fact that you'll have help getting it up and running. Once your business is set up, it's time to watch the income flow in and they've got it down to a science. All you need is 10 clicks of a mouse button and you can make over 600 bucks a day based on our past users. It's so simple and only takes about 30 minutes. How? Just by accessing this fantastic low known loophole on the internet. Try it out yourself here to your success, the Paycheck Solution team. Now, I personally feel like this one is a little bit uh, like bizoppy, like it doesn't make me quite, like, I don't know. I think it would be better if you said you can make like $600 extra a month. Justin, you and I have talked about that before where um, like $600 a day for 10 clicks is a little hard. To believe. It's a lot of claims. Yeah. Proof. And like some of the financial examples we'll go over in a little bit. The financial people are really good at backing everything up with proof because they make these big, these big statements and these big teases and get you really pique your curiosity, but then they back it up with like, well, Forbes said it could be worth this. And then uh, Barron said it could be worth this. And Jenny from Iowa made $3,000 last month doing it. They're really good at backing that up. So you're like, oh shit, maybe this is real. Um, this one kind of misses on that though. Yeah, I agree. And that one, the reason I included this one was it's an example, but I also wanted to do one that I didn't think wasn't strong so we could kind of, you know, analyze it a little bit. So I totally agree on the proof thing. I think that's a great point. $600 per day, again, I think is, is a little unbelievable. This promise, like 10 clicks, $600. Um, and I think, you know, internet loophole is okay, but very generic. I just wonder, you know, what they could have used instead, like a different phrase. Like, even if it was like this, um, like, uh, gosh, I don't know, something like email. I don't even know what the offer is, so it's hard to think of an example. But if it was something like this, like, um, like secret shopper loophole or like something like that, or like, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe people can put suggestions in the chat, but just, I think you can have, they kind of, I like that they, they went with the, the kind of name mechanism, but I think it was just a little bit too generic. Any good, any good suggestions in the chat? I mean, even something like Facebook loophole or Twi Twitter loophole, like would give it a little more. Yeah, that's true. Like the, like Twitter message loophole or like the, the viral Twitter. Yeah. Something, I don't know. It'd be interesting, but, um, Cool. But anyway, those are two examples of using a name mechanism. All right. Last type, or sorry, there's two more types, but um, second to last type, curiosity trick number five, the paradoxical question. I love myself a good paradoxical question. If you have RMBC or you're in copy accelerator, you've heard me talk about paradoxical questions a lot, and they are awesome to be used in your curiosity emails. So here is a really nice short and sweet example from uh, Science Natural Supplements, why Japanese women are skinny, even eating high carbs and sweets. So it's not a question. You could have had it as a question too. Um, it's already kind of a long subject line though, but it is paradoxical. Like you're like, all right, why Japanese women are skinny, even eating high carbs and sweets. That would, it's enough to get me to open it and be like, all right, well, what, what are they talking about? Say, hey, Stefan, I always wondered why Japanese women are so slim and sexy because I always saw them eating large portions of rice and other carbs and sweets. So the rice thing to me immediately does, that's important because then I'm like, it's specific. It's not just carbs, but it's rice. And you're like, oh yeah, that's true. They, they probably do eat a lot of rice. Like my stereotyping American mind, at least they do. Um, so like, you know, yeah, that's curious. Well, new research has finally revealed the, this mystery. Um, I think it'd be better to resolve this mystery versus revealed this mystery. It's weird word choice there. And we've got this image, which we'll come back to in a second. Most Japanese meals are centered around rice, which is high in sugar and carbs. And Japanese women love sweets like chocolate, candy, cake, and baked goods. But surprisingly, new research shows their slim trim body is not from their genes. It's from a nutrient they eat that Harvard University confirms works. Now, here's the great news. Any woman can use this natural Japanese secret to lose weight faster and easier, plus keep it off of no crazy diet or exercise program. 
Get ready to be surprised and shocked because Angela was a complete diet failure all her life. And this natural secret made her lose 76 pounds of fat much faster and easier than ever before and keep it off. Learn all about it over here. So overall, I really like this creative. I think this image of like, these women are all like, you know, like anorexically thin. Um, so, you know, I think that's kind of problematic on a lot of levels. However, because it's like, it's got like, it's hard to see the image and like, let me, let me zoom out a little bit, see if it, you know, see it's kind of blurred, um, but it is like, there's a bunch of stuff in Japanese in here. Like, I think they probably pulled it from like a weird catalog or something, but I actually think the image is good in that it's authentic and it's very bizarre and you're kind of like WTF. And frankly, as fucked up as it is, there is a lot of women out there who like, Think that this is an ideal body even though again it's these women look unhealthily skinny to me um so i think the image is controversial but i think it does work to get clicks and notice how they put a play button overlay on it um and going back to credibility like we talked about before there's like right harvard university confirms it works um and then it's like you know the story of angela who was a diet failure and then she lost 76 pounds I personally don't love learn very basic copywriting 101, but like generally learning implies work. So I think it's a lot easier if it's like click here to see, uh, to discover exactly how it works and how you can start using it today. Click here to discover how you can, you know, whatever. Like, um, I think that'd be a better call to action here. Um, but I do think it's a good email overall as far as like the paradoxical aspect goes. And then here's another example of a paradoxical one. This one says, um, why do we need to wipe? Animals don't. That's literally like a paradoxical question, right? So this is like a very raw paradoxical question um, from smart eats and treats, which is just some like duped email list of who knows how the fuck I got on it. But hey guys, it's Judy. Animals don't need to wipe after they go to the bathroom. So why do you need to? The truth is that needing a lot of toilet paper means there's something wrong with bowel movements and that's something much worse could be going on in your colon, intestines, bowel, stomach, and gut. Weight worries, cancer concerns, diabetes diagnosis, diagnosis, stroke scare. It may sound silly, but it's a medical fact that too much toilet paper could be an early warning sign of something much worse. Here's how to see if you're at risk in the 30-second morning fix. Yours in good health, Judy. Um, so pretty short and sweet, I, but I think this email works because, again, the curiosity aspect and the paradoxical nature of it, of like, okay, animals, that's true, animals don't wipe. And if you think about like, you're like, well, maybe they have gross butts, but then if you think about your dog or like the cat, like every now and then they have some gross like dog poop, but most of the time they don't. Um, it's enough to get your attention, I think. And I think the idea that like having a lot of toilet paper means there's something like much worse going on inside of you uh, does indeed induce curiosity. And then see if you're at risk here. I mean, people are curious. Are you curious if you're at risk? You know, here's how to see if you're at risk. That is a curiosity inducing um, call to action and the 30 second morning fix it promises a solution. So I think that's a good call to action link here. Um, so we've got one more to go through. I'm gonna pause for a second and see if there are any additional kind of questions and to catch up on the chat. Plus I'm gonna drink a sip of water. So one second here. Yeah, not, not really any questions in the chat. Uh, a bunch of people have been kind of answering the ones that are coming in, but cool. yeah, I, yeah, I, I really like this email too. Um, the, the paradoxical question of this one, I think is great. Uh, just grabbed your attention right away. Yeah, I really like that, this one. Um, gonna, of course, I'm gonna get poop in there. Yeah, if you'll comment on the sickly looking models. Yeah, that was, that was a little, it's extreme. Um, but it got your attention and you might click as a result of that. That's the thing about those models, the, the Japanese models and the other one. Uh, okay, last type, getting personal. So. The reason that these work, well, I'll show you examples, but um, people are curious about if you're really talking to them, if you know that they exist, if like you think that they are important or interesting, things like that. So this is one from good old Jordan Belport. Have dinner with me. Like if you see a subject line like that from someone like Jordan Belport and you're like into him, there's a high probability you're gonna open it because you're curious, immediately curious about what, what's the catch? Was he really doing a dinner? Right, maybe you're even skeptical, but you're like, see, like, what's he talking about having dinner with me? Let me, let me click on it. Uh, and then goes into the email. Now he, Jordan kind of does like a whole little mini sales letter in his, um, he doesn't keep it as blind, but I think it makes sense because it's a pretty naked offer. The offer is basically pay him $25,000 to come mastermind. 
and have dinner. Um, he did. The, he's been doing this offer for a while, by the way. He started at ten thousand dollars, which I almost back in the day thought about doing. This is before I knew a ton about him, and I was like, "Wow, I can have dinner with Jordan Belfort for ten thousand uh, dollars." Then I like got to spend time with him with the hundred million mastermind and um, realized that he's a uh, not all there. He's a nice guy. I'm mean, actually nothing negative to say about him at all. He was just very. Um, I don't know if I would get a ton of value personally out of the dinner with him. Um, but yeah, okay. So, you know, hey, Stefan, would you like to come over to my home for dinner? Seriously, this is an actual invitation to have dinner with me in Beverly Hills, not some clever attention grabber that I threw in the subject line. Here's the story. Three months ago, I had a small group of clients over to my home for two days of super intense masterminding and brainstorming and some one-on-one -on -one consulting done directly with me. And then to top it off, we had this incredible dinner punctuated by an evening of world-class storytelling. In short, it was one of the most powerful and productive weekends I've had in a long time, and knowing me, that's saying something. What we accomplished on a business branding and networking level was literally staggering. There are 10 people in all, and they came from all different industries and from all parts of the road. Some were from brick and mortar industries, some came from the tech world, but here's the thing. They all had one very specific goal in common. They wanted me to help them quite simply, add a zero to their income. It's kind of a weird phrasing there when you read it out loud, so I should read your copy out loud. That was it. Um, now, he keeps kind of going on about you know, his program from here. And then he gets to this offer of basically pay him $25,000 to come to dinner. But I think his call to action is going to be a little bit stronger potentially, uh, but it's not a bad email. And again, the, the point is curiosity is like, does Jordan Belfort really invite me to dinner? Some people will be like, oh my God, like he, re he knows me and wants me to have, wants to have dinner with me. Other people are going to know, most people are going to know it's like a marketing thing. They're still going to be curious about what is the deal for this dinner? What are the details? So it's a good subject line, good curiosity. And then the other one. Steph, I want to chime little, in a little bit on that. Uh, oh, sure. It is really interesting because like sometimes when we do the Zoom calls, uh, I use the subject line private invite. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to invite you to a private uh, Zoom call that Stefan and I are doing. You'd be shocked the number of marketers who think it's me personally emailing them. I mean, these are like, not like beginner people who just got off the train. Like they're good marketers who do this for a living. Um, so, I mean, those really personal kind of emails that, um, yeah, they, so, um, I, I got fooled by one the other day from uh, Jay Diebold's Credit Secrets. It was just, it said like Justin meet Blake. And it was like basically a promo email for this guy named Blake who does, teaches internet marketing stuff. And I just like opened it up and <laughs> like started re I, it took me to like the third sentence to realize it was like a promotional email. Yeah, I honestly, I get tricked by them sometimes too. And I think part of it is like an ego play too, right? Like uh, Roland Frazier has done it um, before I go do it. And I'm like, yeah, Roland Frazier should be emailing me about having dinner next week. Or like, you know, <laughs> like, like, yeah. And then you'll be like, oh, oh, it's just, <laughs> oh. Um, like the one I did for, when I did the RNBC, like a uh, two day workshop. And I think I, and I had like one person cancel and had a spot. And I think it was like, um, it was like dinner and, and tequila with me next Thursday or something like that. And that open rate was like way higher than some of the other emails around that same topic for the same reason. So, um, which, you know, to be fair, you were allowed to come up dinner and tequila with me for if you joined the workshop. But um, yeah, I agree, Justin. I mean, they seem simple, but they just work consistently. Um, and then, yeah, like, like in Grant Cardone actually does a lot of those. Um, so here's, the one I pulled, this is a little bit different, but you'll see it. It's actually not that different. Um, invitation, your meme of Grant Cardone, right? So same exact kind of concept as like the dinner with me. Um, I think it would honestly be better if it was like maybe like, hey, like um, want to meet up question mark or something like that. Or like, you know, the invitation makes it feel a little more marketing with like, like you know, your parentheses and all caps invitation. Um, honestly, we just said your meme of Grant Cardone. Like, I think that'd be better. I don't think the invitation I would say that or like your upcoming meeting with Grant Cardone. I think that would, that would get my attention. Yeah, I like that. Um, but it is cool. Like, you know, hey, Stefan, I noticed you have not yet. I have noticed that you have yet to confirm your attendance for a meeting this Monday, January 11th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Should I be expecting you, Stefan? Yes, I'll be there. No, I need help getting there. <laughs> I need help when... Um, this is a funny, like, I don't know what this no even means, but like, but I'm sure if you, if you click no, he's gonna sell you, right? This is Grant Cardone. Uh, during this meeting, I will reveal the one thing that separates those who succeed and those who don't. In just 60 minutes, you'll receive the knowledge required to make your dreams a reality. Remember, Stefan, both success and failure have their challenges. Achieving success is difficult, but can make life easy, while failing is easy, but makes life difficult. Click here to choose success. Look forward to our meeting, Grant Cardone. Um, 
I like this, the click here to choose success call to action. I think that's pretty solid. Um, but, you know, same kind of style. So I want to show you that this is like something that, that works a lot with like biz op. I mean, you see it with um, on the health side, people are always like order confirmation for Stefan. Like, hey, Stefan, where should we ship this? You know, like, um, Stefan, we need your address to finish your order or to finish your shipment, things like that. But just like things that are like, oh, they're talking to me specifically. Um, so just to recap, and then Justin's going to share some more examples. The six curiosity tricks that um, I've shared, one is reflecting a question on your audience's mind. Like, um, you know, I could send out an email that's like, hey, is, uh, is, is RMBC just for sales letters, right? Or is Copy Accelerator really worth it? Um, you know, whatever the question is, like you can just like literally do questions like that. Number two, curiosity trick using a quiz or an informal survey. Again, I really like the digital marketer example. Um, and then I showed you how you can swipe that in any kind of niche, right? And do the same thing. Curiosity trick number three, appeal to authority or credibility. Smart people are doing this. Uh, you know, again, it's, it's like the doctors choose camel or whatever, lucky strike, whatever the cigarette thing was. But it's the same idea of like, you know, the, the, the credibility, appeal to authority and credibility has been going on forever and you can do it in any category. Curiosity trick number four is uh, use a named mechanism. Curiosity trick number five, the paradoxical question, always a really powerful one. And curiosity trick number six is getting personal, like we saw with Jordan Belford and Grant Cardone. So I will stop sharing my screen. And then Justin, if you would like to share um, some of your stuff. stuff. Yeah, so I got a couple more examples I'm going to share with you guys um, on top of Stefan's here. Well, I had it. Where'd it go? There we go. Cool. So this is one from actually a copy accelerator member, uh, Jeremy Reeves. Uh, he has a digestive supplement. So Starts off, Stanford researchers have just discovered an un unusual nutrient that eliminates constipation by breakfast. You simply add it to your breakfast, coffee, tea, oatmeal, or smoothie, and fully empty your bowels effortlessly, naturally, and daily. Plus, it's completely flavorless and mixes easily, so you don't even know it's in there. It's working like crazy for men and women of all ages, including Jeremy, who eliminated decades of constipation in just three days when nothing else worked, along with four pounds of stuck poop that made him feel bloated, fatigued, and heavy. Add this to your coffee for perfect poops daily. So we've got the really big curiosity image here. Um, Steph and I say this all the time. Uh, if you're not using these images in your emails, you're probably leaving 20, 30% of revenue on the table. Uh, they if you, especially if you hit the right image, if you hit the right image, you're going to get a pretty big boost in revenue. So you definitely should be adding them. This is a, I feel like a very, just like perfect example of a curiosity email. It just got some good proof in here with the Stanford thing. Um, a little more proof with it worked for Jeremy who eliminated his decades of constipation. Um, we could probably tease a little more, but, uh, overall, I think it does a pretty good job at that. This one is for Metacore. Metacore was like probably the number one or number two selling supplement last year on ClickBank. Uh, this is a very just curiosity based one, really doesn't give, a, give away a whole lot of stuff. So it says, eat this first thing, add this to your breakfast to burn one to two pounds daily. Uh, try this fat burning breakfast loophole, 213,000 people do it every morning. They wake up, go to the bathroom and add this to their breakfast to drop one to two pounds daily. So super curiosity based image here. Looks like you're like, what the hell is that? I need to know what that is. It's easy and works every time. And it's something the billion dollar weight loss industry do not want you to see. Watch this video before it's taken down. Honestly, I don't even think this email is that good. Uh, there's not a lot of proof in it. There's not a lot of, but it's working. I mean, it could be working because the VSL is so good. Um, and they're just sending a boatload of clicks. I, the image here is for, without a doubt, the best part of it. Um, and that could be just getting so many clicks that that's, what's making it work. Financial example. This one has been in my inbox over and over and over again. Uh, so the subject line is 10 times bigger than Amazon, Apple, and Google. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Mark Zuckerberg, along with the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Pentagon are all piling into a controversial new technology. And then you have this really kind of interesting image here with the faces blurred out. 
According to the World Economic Forum, this new technology could be worth 12.7 trillion over the next few years. That's 10 times the size of Amazon today and bigger than mega tech firms like Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook combined. If you're looking to cash in on the next major tech trend, this is it. Click here for the full story, blah, blah, blah. So again, a lot of going back to what Stefan said with his using big name people that are getting behind this, uh, big name kind of institutions, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff lends it a lot of credibility. You have the super curiosity based image here that has like Pelosi, Joe Biden, AOC, Bezos, Zuckerberg kind of all blurred out, but you can still kind of tell who they are. Um, yeah, this is a great example. Like I said, this one just keeps showing up in my inbox from multiple financial companies. So it's obviously working. Steph, any questions coming in that we want to hit? Um, this is a technical one about like sort of ESPs and stuff and putting images in, but really it's just like, you know, most ESPs will let you insert an image. Um, yeah. Does alluding to secret work in curiosity based emails? Um, yeah, definitely. But I think it was just so broad. It's probably if the secret's like named or something, or there's like, you know, like if you're just like, hey, there's a secret way to lower blood sugar, you know, like click here to see what the secret is. It's like, yeah. But I mean, there's got to be a little more specifics around like the secret, like other specific things you're teasing about it without actually giving away what the secret is. Um, so yeah, but yeah, those are the main ones. So this one, uh, this is probably one of my favorites. I think this email is insanely well written. Uh, this came from the Oxford Club. They had a promo last year. Uh, it was called the Single Stock Retirement Plan. The subject line is great. I think there was usually a, there's supposed to be a question mark behind it. So subject line, retire rich on one $3 stock. Like that right there is just oozing curiosity. Uh, that's gonna get you to open it. So it says, Picture the perfect stock for a moment. What would it look like? No doubt it would have hundreds of billions in revenue, more than tech giants like IBM, Facebook, and Google. It would probably be a leader in cutting edge technology like smartphones, robotics, e-commerce, and medical equipment. It would have tens of thousands of unbreakable patents. It would, it would pay an enormous dividend. It would be on the verge of dozens of blockbuster announcement, announcements that would send the stock higher and higher. And most of all, it would trade ultra cheap, less than $3. Seems crazy that such a stock exists, but it does. And you've likely never heard of it. Why? Because it trades under a secret name. Seriously, it's true. My colleague, stock picking legend Alexander Green just gave the most shocking live presentation regarding this perfect stock. He says the single stock alone could pay for your retirement. Go here to see more for yourself. This, I, I love everything about this. Um, the image here is great. I love how they kind of position it as this shocking live presentation. You have him there, here on the screen. So it's like, makes it feel like it's not going to a VSL kind of thing, even though it is a VSL. Um, yeah, everything about this, like the, it's short and punchy. The sentences just kind of flow. Um, everything, like I said, everything about it is great. It has a lot of kind of proof and really just teases you over and over and over again about how, how great this is. So yeah, those are the ones I had to share. Uh, Steph, anything you want to add there? Um, no, I think that that's, those are some good additional examples for sure. Awesome. So um, one thing uh, we do want to kind of chat about uh, coming up is our Copy Accelerator virtual event. Um, usually at the end of these calls, we'll just tell you a little about, about the event. Uh, after our last call, I think we had, I don't know, 11, 12 people signed up from it. Yeah. Um, it's coming up February 23rd through the 25th. And if you like kind of the content that we went over today, that's the exact type of stuff that we share at the event. Uh, everything at our events is we talk about how to convert offers on cold traffic. So we talk about things like ads, sales pages, upsells, emails, all of that stuff. Um, it really is the only kind of mastermind, the only kind of events that are specifically focused on that. Other, other masterminds tend to go I don't know, more broad. Ours is always very specifically focused on uh, getting an offer to convert on cold traffic, which is super important, whether you're a copywriter or you have your own offers or you're a media buyer. Um, yeah, some people are <laughs> putting in the chat that everyone needs to go. If you are going to the event, pop something in the chat right now and let us know. I'm kind of curious how many people we got on the call that are gonna be. 
Lorraine said yes. Kimmy Dew said yes. Patrick said yes. Andre, wow, they're coming in so fast. Sam, yeah, I love it. Matt, awesome. Great. Um, yeah, so if you want to go to the event, Stephen, do you want to pull something up and kind of give them a, a rundown? Yeah, of what? Sure. Do that. So I put the um, I put the, the link into the chat for the the sales page on it. I mean, the thing that's cool too is like not only are you getting these actionable kind of talks from Justin and myself, but Justin, what are we doing? We're doing I think AOV boosters. We're doing um, I'm doing one about how to like basically an offer that's not working on cold traffic and, and like the like instant fixes you can apply that will transform it with tons of examples and like specific things that will get your offer to go from like a dud or like a mediocre offer to a home run offer. Um, we do have Mr. X, who's one of the best uh, emailers in the world, um, managing, I don't know, a shit ton of records and making a ton of money from it. So there's really specific stuff on email marketing. Um, you know, John Benson is going to be there with uh, Pauline and uh, we have a, and, um, I'm so back an amazing copy panel. Carly Ingley Cole is coming back. Uh, she was so popular. She actually, what's cool too is at our events, like our guests, a lot of them actually hang out and attend all the content and like will interact. So like Carlene like was, at, like, for, I thought she was going to just come talk in the panel. And she was like from day one, she was like in there in these round tables. We they do like breakout rooms using something called um, like air meet where basically there's like six people at a table and you go to the table and, and you go to an open table and talk. And she was like floating around going to tables and we were doing the like workshops and stuff. And like just giving people master classes or, or like sh shredding their copy apart and be like, here's the headline you need to use. And it was like nuts. And so imagine like Justin and I doing that, plus like Dan Ferrari, Chris Wright, all these like rock stars who are in our, our program, Randall Pruitt, I mean, countless others, Jared Harlan. Um, and then like people like Carlene, John Benson, Steve Gunn, Jay DeBolt, who runs Spread Secrets. I mean, it's a crazy, uh, crazy thing. And there's there's a lot of like hardcore content that we're talking about um, from people like Carlene. John Benson, like I mentioned, Henry Bingham, or Bingaman, I don't say his name wrong. Uh, Pauline Longden, uh, James Van Elzik, who's one of the best media buyers in the world, basically wrote the book on uh, Native, um, how to get customers, how to write the good ads, how to scale on Native. Steve Gunn, who's got his Tommy Chung offer doing 1,500 plus friends a day. And everyone who talks is giving you hardcore like value, right? So um, it's over, it starts on the evening of 23rd for cocktail party. We have an awesome surprise there too. In addition, Mr. X, like a very, very, very famous person in our space who's going to come drop a ton of knowledge based on their 20 plus years of uh, experience is one of the kind of God fathers. It, it gives away that's a man, but the God fathers of, of kind of um, digital marketing and stuff like that. This person doesn't do a ton of stuff in our circle. So it's going to be amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, and then it just goes from there. We have like all kinds of tactical presentations from experts, but there's also a ton of networking. For copywriters uh, who are looking for clients, we have virtual uh, networking sessions where we get offer owners at different virtual tables and have them there seeing what they're looking for. And then you get to go in and actually travel to different tables and talk with offer owners and share who you are and get your FaceTime with them. Uh, it leads to tons of opportunities. I think like there's, I don't know, like several dozen people got jobs or gigs from our last event. Um, and if you're an offer owner, it's a great place to find copywriters because you're going to be exposed to a ton of high quality copywriters who are not afraid of committing and investing in yourself and our community. Uh, you'll get to rub shoulders of the biggest names of direct response. Uh, like I said, we've got you know, Golden Hippos in our mastermind, V-Shred, and Scalp Nation, Credit Secrets, Jada Bolt, um, Paleo Hacks. I'm forgetting like a million people. There's like pretty much everyone that you can imagine who's big in our space will be at this event. Uh, but the really cool and important thing in addition to like your ticket, like buy the ticket for the event, but you also get into Copy Accelerator Lite for all the weeks leading up to the event. So you've still got 20 days until the event starts. So what does that actually entail or imply? Well, you get weekly training calls from Justin and I that are available for our Copy Accelerator members. So the one we just did uh, was breaking down a really high converting VSL and kind of why it was working. Um, but if you go in here, this is our members area, because not only do we do these calls weekly, Justin and I, like kind of what we just did here, but frankly, even more in depth and more actionable stuff, but you get access to this entire like archive of every training call we've ever done for our mastermind. Daniel Doan, who joined it, messaged me, was like, dude, this is the most insane thing I've ever seen. He's like, this is really easy. You guys over deliver like crazy. And we're like, yeah, we know. So RBC method, boom, get trained on that. 
upsells, which Justin's a master on. We've done multiple sessions on upsells, step-by-step -step guides, how to rate high converting upsells again and again and again. Um, whether you're selling something new or more of the same, downsells, how to optimize your checkout pages. Um, we've talked about goal setting. And then just, I mean, everything you can imagine, leads, headlines, fascinations, empathy maps, storytelling, closes, uh, just like you name it, we have done it. Um, great headlines. I mean, there's so much good stuff. The whole thing on great headlines and leads, specific examples, tons of stuff on email copy, tons of sessions on that whole like kind of series on uh, hidden needle movers that can increase your average order value conversions and things like that. And again, think about this is important regardless of if you're a copywriter or an offer owner or an employee of a company, it doesn't matter, right? Like these are the things that if you're an offer owner, to get your offer from hundred sales a day to a thousand sales a day or from 10 sales a day to hundred sales a day. If you're a copywriter and you know this stuff, you, you look like a genius to your clients. It's so how you start charging way more. You become consult consultative instead of being like sort of um, just the hired gun you can get involved in more aspects in the funnel and you basically get to grow your career very rapidly by just implementing this stuff. It also removes the confidence block of being like, I don't know what to tell them. If your client needs help with something, we have the answer in here. So you can just go in and find the answer and do it. So um, you can get access to this members area uh, plus all the live training calls, which will, there's actually more calls I'll tell you about in a second when you buy your ticket. And in addition to all of that, we've got stuff on the business of copywriting um, open Q and A calls. We've had guests come like Chris Haddad and others and, and do special sessions. Heath Wilcock did one on advertorials. Uh, we have compliance calls, a whole archive of compliance calls. We're one of the best compliance, uh, Facebook compliance experts in the world is going through and sharing exactly how to make stuff Facebook compliant. You can just watch along and see the changes that need to be made. Um, and then, yeah, for Copy Starter Light, which you're a member of, you get three additional bonus calls. So you get, you get these when you buy a ticket. So you've got two um, feedback calls per week, one with Saba Karimi, one with Mike Abramoff. So for both of those, you bring your copy, they review the copy live on a call and give you feedback to make your copy better. And these are two of the best copywriters out there. And you get a third bonus call, which is the um, art and business of copywriting or freelancing with Brian Sperinello, where Brian is basically helping you to craft proposals, telling you how to charge higher rates, how to get clients in the first place. Brian is one of the foremost experts on freelance copywriting in the world. And he does a weekly training call with our members who are freelancers. Um, and he's actually doing all the sessions he's doing leading up to the event are about how to get clients at an event. So if you're a freelancer and you're wondering, man, how do I get clients at this event? Brian literally is doing these masterclass trainings on how to get uh, clients. And you can see here, you know, with Saba, Brian doing his, I mean, there's just like the value is insane. Uh, we have a bunch of other additional bonuses to other like lead examples, um, sales letter dissections, my swipe file. And then you get the recordings from all of our previous events. So if you missed like Carleen the last time, which everybody was raving about, you can watch her amazing talk. If you want to know about how to do affiliate marketing and how to actually, you know, uh, scale with acquisition, Amber's talk was mind blowing. You want to do YouTube ads? Mike gave an insane presentation for like an hour and a half on how to do YouTube ads and like everything about writing them, scaling them, everything like that. Emily Lark, who's one of the most inspiring people I know, talked about how she went from broke and about to lose her home to having an eight-figure offer. Dan Ferrari tells you how to create a big idea in three little steps. This is an amazing presentation. Dan doesn't do a ton of public speaking. He did one at our last event. And that was just the last virtual one. You've got the videos from the live event in uh, last February, a year ago, of all kinds of huge names. Like Chris Haddad's talk was amazing. Natural Health Sherpa gave this blueprint to gain to $70 million. Jay DeBolt, by the way, I mean, fucking Jay DeBolt's upsell talk. We could just like Jay would get, I, I, this is the, that talk alone is probably worth like, I don't know what, like $20,000. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have used the one talk, this one talk from Jay and they doubled or tripled their, their conversion rate on their upsells. I'm not, there's no, no hype. It's just insane. It's like the gold standard. And then Justin has now even added more to it with his upsell kind of methodology, which you also get in these recordings. So anyway, I've been all the way back to um, September, our first copy start event, plus the recordings of my original RMBC, the, the, the first time I ever presented at RMBC, you actually get access to the live recordings for that whole thing, the two-day workshop. Again, this is all with your tickets. Justin, I don't know if you've been putting the link in the chat, but definitely make sure you are. If you're not, um, I can pop it in too. Or I'll trust you, Justin. You got it? You can put it in there? Yeah, I'll pop it in. Yeah, please pop it in there. So, I mean, if you're not applying yet, you need to apply because, again, you get all of this with your ticket to the event. Um, you also get access to the Facebook group. So, this is the Copy Starter Fool Facebook group, which, by the way, is showing all the calls that are coming up, right? So, Copy Feedback with Mike Abramoff. Uh, that was for this week. Um, our actual call Justin and I, business of freelancing call Brian, 
Um, we have a Facebook compliance call that we're doing with people. And then you have um, another copy review and feedback call. Salah, that was all this week. Imagine like if you ever feel like you need more resources or you're on an island or you know you wish you had somebody looking over your copy for you, um, like you get that copy starter light. I mean, frankly, you should join copy starter light, but copy starter light is like, I don't know, $15,000 or $1,450 uh, per month for 12 months. It's a minimum 12 month commitment. That's a very serious commitment. But if you're like, man, I wish I could, you know, if you want to be in Copic Star Light even for, you know, a month right now, if you want to see what it's like, when you buy a ticket to this event, which is going to be like the gold standard of virtual events and just events in general, um, you should buy the ticket, you should apply to, to come. And then you still get to go, you get all of these crazy assets and trainings involved. It's nuts. It's, 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 it's insane. Um, but you'll also see that, like people are asking for feedback in the group and Justin and I are going through and actually giving critiques. You can see us giving live feedback and in, in, to our writers. We're doing executive summaries of all the calls with these really badass PDFs. So you can see people just loving it. Like Joe Legabo, this is awesome. Jeremy Reeves, sweet. Um, people are sharing tips on avoiding the spam folder. Um, so, I mean, literally like it's just a master, you know, mastermind in the true sense of the word. That's all, like, this is all, you know, 15 hours ago, two hours ago, um, you know, nine hours ago. It's super active and you get into the fucking copy sort of like, I'm not gonna say fucking, I guess because I'm gonna be like, damn, like, this is so much value, right? There's a second Facebook group for members of Light um, where people are talking about all kinds of different, there's even more threads and more content, more value in this hyperactive community. So you get all that when you come and check out this page and apply to attend. Um, it makes sense to apply now versus waiting because the longer you wait, the less time you have with all of the resources, right? If you apply now, you've got over 20 days to be going on the calls, uh, looking through the archive, all of these videos, watching all of the trainings, getting answers, engaging in the Facebook group, building your network, you know, whether you're a business owner and want to connect with other business owners, you're a freelancer and you want to be business owners, you're a freelancer and you want to connect with other freelancers, whatever it is, um, the faster you apply and get your ticket, the more time you have to leverage all of these resources. So it just makes sense to apply now and not wait. Uh, it's a complete no-brainer, and it's like um, so the ticket is one thousand four hundred fifty dollars. Usually, we honestly do like three thousand dollars, but because it's virtual, we cut it in half. And also because that's what a month of light costs if you did the twelve month like kind of a payment thing. So we figured, fuck it, we'll make it the same amount as like that would be. But um, yeah, that's all I got on it. I just really, I guess the other thing to note, Justin, we talk about this all the time, but like really, this truly is something that that is valuable no matter where you are in your journey too. Um, you know, we've had we have some of the biggest names in the world in our, you know, within our industry, I guess you'd say, in our, in our mastermind and buying tickets. Um, and we've got people who are just starting out. And I can't tell you how many people who are early on their journey have bought a ticket and made one connection. And then suddenly like everything's changed for them. And, and they've just, it was like they're coming out party. Um, and same thing with offer owners. They came and learned one thing and suddenly, hey, I'm doing a million dollars now. Like, you know, I'm doing $5 million. Like that stuff happens all the time at this event. Um, and it can happen to you too. And it's an incredibly supportive community. There's no egos. They all get checked at the door. So whether you're a beginner or an expert, um, you're welcomed at our events and we're here to, to support you and help you to grow and get better. And that's what we do at them. If anyone has questions about the event uh, or about getting a ticket to the event, feel free to pop in the chat. We'll, we'll answer any of those questions right now. Um, as Stefan said, it, it is application only. Uh, you can't just buy a ticket unless you've previously been to one of our events, then you can. So you, you're pretty qualified if you came to one of our previous events. Really, our big thing is we want to make, we want to keep the quality of the room high because this is, this is our mastermind that people are paying anywhere from fifteen to $40,000 to be a part of. Um, so we don't just want anyone attending. Uh, so that's why we kind of have the call to, to screen people and see if you're a good fit for the event. Um, yeah, one thing Rebecca just posted is what really amazed me was the generosity and friendliness of the community. I felt welcome and I'm an introvert with lots of social anxiety. That really is something we honestly don't talk about it enough, but everyone in the Copy Accelerator community is rooting for everyone else to win. I think it's one of the coolest things about the whole community, whether you're brand new, whether you're making a hundred million dollars a year, um, everyone in there is rooting for you to do well. And, there's, and everyone in there is actually very helpful with making that happen for you, uh, which I think is really unique. I, I mean, I, I've, I'm a part of a lot of different masterminds, but I haven't really seen that uh, happen in other places. So, yeah, I mean, if you're the type of person who kind of wants, 
it's kind of almost like a team effort where you have all these people in the group who have your back. Um, and that's simply by coming to the event. Um, you kind of get to join this, I don't know, elite level group of people that are making really good money, have the freedom, have the lifestyle that they want. Um, and you get to be a part of that. You get to learn from them. You get to learn from Stefan and I, and then you get to make connections with all these people that can lead to gigs. If you're a copywriter, can lead to partnerships. Uh, if you got your own offers, you got your own business. So it really is a, a pretty magical community. So if you're thinking of applying, I would highly recommend doing it. Get on a call with Blake from our team. He will chat with you. It's not a high pressure sales call or anything like that. Um, literally just kind of, he'll ask you a few questions and feel you out to see if you're a good fit. If you are a good fit, uh, he'll tell you. If you're not a good fit, he will tell you that as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Yeah, for sure. I think I saw we just had five or six people, four people have applied since we've been talking, which is congratulations. You're stoked for you. Um, all the people who did, I love seeing those people come in. Um, and again, this is really, you're going to have FOMO. I promise you. Cause like, look, let's talk really quick about this. Not, I'm not going to like a crazy hard pitch on it. Like every time we do these events, there's these people who kind of wait till the very end and then decide, ah, screw it. All right. And they buy a ticket. And look, I get it. Like if you straight up don't have the money, then you don't have the money. And that, that's okay. You know, we'll get you there. But, um, you know, there's people who do and they just sort of wait and then they buy and they're like, oh, I should have bought my ticket earlier. I remember Brian Sparrow actually told me that. He's like, like one of my biggest regrets, he obviously joined our mastermind after and now he's like teaching and he's, he's amazing and a rock star. But he was like, one of my big regrets is that I, I waited till like the end because I could have just used all the assets, you know, before um, in the weeks leading up to it. And I kind of got out of the last minute, actually went through all the content and realized like, oh, I made a mistake. I should have been, should have got my ticket earlier. Um, and so we always have people who wait until the end and, and, you know, then they decide to do it. And if you think that's going to be you, then just like apply now, get the ticket now. Um, cause then leverage all these assets you get lean up to it. You know, it just makes perfect sense. And I don't know about you, but like, I can't say how many times I've made investments like this personally, where it's hard to actually make a decision. But once I do the relief, I feel, um, like I feel like so light and the money, like, and so as soon as I pay for it, I'm no longer worried about the money. Like I'm still, like, I'm just on to bigger and better things and I'm making more money replacing the money I just invested. I mean, this, this is like legit investment. Um, so, you know, if you're on the fence about it, I'd say just jump in now and do it. Uh, otherwise the phone is gonna be real. We've got 220 plus members in the mastermind. Um, we've got, you know, a hundred plus people who applied actually had a hundred people applicants on the nose right now. Out of that, I think 60 plus people have already bought a ticket. Let me see where we're at. Yeah, 62 people have already bought a ticket. Um, you know, it'll be pretty awesome. Uh, by the way, Robert did ask, I see that. Um, the CA portal looks pretty overwhelming. Do you have a short list of the best content for you before entering down the event? Yeah, Justin just answered in there. But if you go in the very top, there's like a, a section that literally says, um, it's like start here. Uh, it says, what the phrasing for exactly? The nine most important videos start here. So. Just start with those. And then from there, you know, you can always cherry pick as well. Um, but and also, yeah. I would say it also depends on what you want to do. Like if you're solely focused on email and you write emails all the time, then just go in and watch the email videos. Don't, don't worry about watching all the other stuff. Um, yeah, everything's broken down. Like don't feel like you have to go in there and watch all 600 videos. Um, pick the couple that really appeal to you and that you think are going to help you. Um, and you're going to get a pretty big ROI on it just from doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's true. And I think it was Rebecca mentioned that you can also ask Blake. Yeah, when you do the call, Blake, um, when you're buying your ticket, Blake can definitely give you a guide, like a, kind of a, an overview of what's in the members area um, and help you make sure you get in the right direction there. And then our members are here to help you too. Again, it's pretty amazing. Awesome, Jeanette. Yeah, Jeanette said Blake's the man. Uh, he really is. Um, Cool. So yeah, Justin, anything you want to add to, to this? No, uh, I just want to thank everybody for showing up. Uh, Steph, you want to pop the link in again, and then we'll pop the link to the Google Doc in there as well. Uh, I, opened yes, the, I opened the share settings on that, so everybody should have access to it. Um, thanks again for showing up. Thanks again for participating in this call. Um, hopefully you guys got a lot out of this that you can use in your own emails or emails you're writing for clients. Um, the cure, like you said, the curiosity stuff works. It's continuing to work. Uh, just even in the last, I don't know, five, six months, I feel like I'm seeing more and more and more curiosity emails hit my inbox. So 
seems to be working uh, better than it has been. So if you're looking for the document, uh, it was posted it in the good. chat. So everybody who keeps asking, just read the chat. That's where it's posted. It's a Google Doc, so you can check it out there. And again, if you want to uh, apply for a seat at the Copy Accelerator Mastermind coming up February 23rd through the 25th, it is a virtual event. Click on the link that Stefan popped in the chat as well, and uh, you can apply for a seat there. Um, yeah, I'll put this up on my YouTube channel, but uh, from Stefan and I, thanks for tuning in and thanks for joining us on the call today. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this and um, look forward to seeing everybody live you at the event and um, in the Copy Accelerator Facebook group and everywhere else. But no matter what, appreciate you uh, joining and always a pleasure. See you guys. Thanks, everyone.